4-4. In this exercise, we're going to create a pivot table report that shows the total number of orders and the revenues earned by each salesperson for each product category. So we begin by clicking anywhere in our data set here um, under source data. And then here we have data, pivot table. You should confirm that the pivot table wizard has chosen the correct table or range to be the source of data from your workbook. And this one's correct, so we'll just go over here. You can choose to place the pivot table in a new worksheet or in an existing worksheet. In our case, we're going to put it in a new worksheet, so we're going to leave this selected and we're going to say OK. So now we are in a new worksheet and here we have the uh, layout of the pivot table. So the way it works is all of the fields of the table are going to be shown up here. This is taken from the first row of our worksheet and you just simply select the fields and make sure they show up in the right sections of the pivot table layout. So we have four sections here. There's the report filter, the labels for each column of your report, the labels on each row, and the data values that you want to summarize or count or average and so on and so forth. So from our um, model answer, you can see that we want salesperson to appear on each row. So we're going to take salesperson here. And if you'll notice, as you tick, the wizard will uh, place the, um, the field into one of the boxes here. And sometimes it places it in the correct place, and sometimes it doesn't place it where you want it to go. So here, salesperson was automatically placed into row labels. And over here, you can see that the salesperson names appear on each row. Now, this is where we want it to go. But in case you didn't want salesperson on each row, but you wanted it on each column, you can just drag it. You can just drag it over here. And as you can see now, the salesperson names appear on each column. So that's that's why we say pivot table reports are dynamic because even after they've been built, you can easily change the layout. Um, now we're going to move it back to the row because that's where we want it to be. And uh, the second label that we want on each row is the category. So I'm going to take category. Okay, now for some reason, the pivot table uh, builder put category under values, but that's not where we want it to go. So we can simply drag it over to the row labels. And now you'll see um, on each row, we have the salesperson. And under each salesperson, we have the product categories for which they have made sales. Then the next field we want is the order amount. So we're going to take order amount. And since order amount is a number, it automatically goes into the values. And um, as you can see, it says uh, sum of order amount here. But we also want to count the number of orders. So we want order amount a second time. So since we've already ticked it over here, we can't tick it a second time. So I'm just going to drag it one more time down to values. So now we've got two order amounts, but for the first one, I'm going to change the properties to count. Okay, so we're going to count the orders rather than sum it. Okay, so now we've got two columns up here. We have the count of orders and we have the sum of order amount. And um, now we're going to go and um, format our report. So let me zoom in here for a bit. Okay, so let's. Okay, so you can double click on a on the column title so that you can um, rename the field. So instead of count of order amount, we're going to rename this as number of orders. And um, here, sum of order amount 2, we're going to rename this as revenues. And another thing we want to do is uh, change the report layout. So up here, you know, when you click on the pivot table, you'll see some menu options up here. One of the options you'll see is layout. Try tabular. 
Okay, so now this layout uh, shows us um, the category along with the salesperson, but they both are in one row rather than category appearing under salesperson. And we've got number of orders here and revenues. And uh, for each group, we have a subtotal here. So let's just uh, format our revenues. And we're also going to sort by revenues. So up here under data, you see there's sort, and we're going to say sort by descending. And what that does is it will immediately show us for each salesperson which category they generated the highest revenue for. So you can see that Adams um, made the most sales in the flowers category. Same thing with Baker, Clark, and it seems like all of our salespeople sold the most uh, for flowers. And um, so you can quickly see the trends um, by using the sort facility. And uh, that's it for exercise 4-4. So don't forget to double click the sheet name here and rename it as exercise 4-4.